So just to give you guys a bit of a brief overview, some of you will know, some of you were here last year, some of you won't. So Uplift is a charity that provides advice, signposting, peer and professional support to empower skydivers who are either experiencing mental health problems, drug and alcohol addictions, they've maybe been involved or witnessed or been affected by a major incident in skydiving. Maybe they've suffered a bereavement in skydiving or they might have been affected by another trauma or need, another or need additional support. So we campaign to raise awareness and improve services. Why we set up the charity. So I'm going to start with Taff and let him tell you why he got involved. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Peter Taff Mather. And one of the reasons why I contacted Kate, first of all, was um, because I was a little bit upset with the amount of suicides that was happening at the time three years ago in skydiving especially. I lost eight friends of mine in the last three years through suicide. Um, so it would jig me up to really set up the charity and try to get a support network where we could start giving back to the sport, sport sorry, and then we can move forward and people can have some safe place to come and speak to us about their problems and what they need to resolve. So about the same time, I'd had a few members come to me with various different things, and they, I had one member in particular that came to me that was leaving the sport, and they had had a couple of really severe incidents they'd gone through. So they'd witnessed a fatality, and they'd lost a loved one. And they didn't want anyone in the sport to have to go, what, go through what they had without any support. They couldn't get any additional support, any counselling um, with that. And I had a few of the members come with different things, ranging from coming back from injuries to sexual abuse to lots of different things that they were struggling with. So around the same time, I'd seen two what I would class as gold standard um, when I come from healthcare, so we say gold standard ways of working. So Australia had had a fatality and they provided counselling to all the people that were at that drop zone. So not just the skydivers, their family, their friends. And then in Denmark, they also had a fatality and they had a counsellor brought on site for a week. And that counsellor stayed there for a week and that was for the staff and for any fun jumpers that wanted to come and discuss or have, have a chat. Um, so I'd kind of tried to find routes that we might be able to help and at the same time, Taff came on board and give me, give me an option to help do that. So what have we done so far? So we've got our Uplift website. So if any of you have seen that, it's a simplified route to signpost people with various different um, concerns, anything from mental health, depression, anxiety, sexual assaults, um, bereavements. There's lots of tabs, and a lot of it's to do with either charities, their websites, their helplines, the NHS websites, um, police in certain circumstances. So we've got the Uplift website. We've then got, we've been fundraising, so we've been doing that for the last year because we need to progress the charity to the next stage and we needed funds to do that. We've done small scale peer support, so we have had people contact us and we've spoken to them ourselves if they want to speak to someone who's maybe been in a similar situation. We've managed to find people that can talk to them and can help them through those. We've applied for charity status, which is a bit of a, the charity commission is quite hard and we've gone backwards Mind and field. forwards, but hopefully, hopefully in the next couple of months we'll have that, that through as well. And then we've done some charity policies. So the new confidentiality policy um, is on the website. And then we've also got the Aviva Uplift counselling line. So this is something that we've worked with Romero, who's the British Skydiving Insurance. So every time you're a member, you pay your insurance. And part of that is through Aviva. So that counselling line is 24 hours. It's run by the Priory and they cover various things. So you, as a member, you can contact them free and you can get counselling for various things. Depression, anxiety, drug and alcohol addiction. Um, I think, uh, I think the, the biggest one for us right now is that we've broke through and got, you know, a counselling line which is set up by Aviva, which is through Romero's, which everybody knows is the insurance company for British Skydiving. So for me and Kate, that's a big achievement. And it means that at any point, anybody can ring the number, which is 24 hours, and just talk to someone on the end of the phone. It's not Samaritans. It's not like that. It's very similar to Samaritans, but what um, the prior is is specialist in where they direct you. So the first phone call is example, and I've done this by the way, so I've tried and tested it. I've been in the priory when I was 21. You'll find out about that later on in the seminar. Um, and what they do is they direct you into which direction you're going to go. So the first phone call will just be to calm you down. The second one, uh, the, in, during the call, they'll then be working out where you're going to go, what peer support you need, and also whether you're going to need to see a counsellor. With the insurance right now that we have with Aviva, through British Skydiving, by the way, we now have like brought, brought to light 
that we get five free counseling sessions through our insurance, which is through our membership, right? Which is fantastic. Like Aviva's every insurance, every insurance policy that Aviva have, they have five free counseling sessions. We, as British Skydiving members, all have the right to get that as well. So it's a great achievement from, especially Kate, I, I have to say that this is, been massively driven from Kate and she needs a massive round of applause in my opinion for doing this but it's a fantastic thing that we have got in place where it's complete and utter last minute kind of emergency calls where skydivers can just call now you know and we're going to have this being signposted uh, working with British Skydiving which again is a big achievement for both of us you know we're, we're moving forward with the governing body that's going to be signposted hopefully in a lot of drop zones and then we'll tell you in a minute in the next slide where we're going to go and what we've, what we've been doing for the future and the next 24, 12 months, not 24 <laughs> months. <laughs> so the Aviva counselling line covers a lot of things. It covers counsellors who are specialists in eating disorders, who are specialists in mental health and, and drug and alcohol addictions. It covers a lot of those. But there's a couple of things where they've said that if they get someone that need specialist counselling, and one of those things that we identified was potentially trauma counselling if someone is going in or potentially suffering with PTSD. So we've now got a clause in your insurance as well where we've got up to a £1,000 for every member that you can claim back and you can get insurance. So if the Aviva, Aviva line feel that like you need something specialist, you can use your insurance. So we're going to be giving you details on how to do that, but in the very short term, if anyone needs that, please contact us and we'll let you know how to do that. Right, so we just want to say thank you because the first stage to everyone that supported us. So we've raised a lot of money on our Just Given page. So I want to say thank you to every single person that's donated to that. We want to say a big thank you to Black Knights. They raised two grand for us in an event they did this year, which was amazing. I want to say a really big thanks to Langer Cafe because they've been doing events for us as well. Have I missed anyone else out? Um, no, I don't think we have actually. <coughs> let us move to the next stage so what is the next stage so we're looking to um, start what we call a peer support service so some people may not want to go down the counseling route or they may want to do that in addition so the peer support service we've got um, quotations from Samaritans and they're going to provide us with training and we're going to be looking for 12 volunteers to do that we're then going to bring in a sort of form of triage service so that when people contact us, we can tell them all the different options they have. Um, so as far as signposting or counselling or peer support or life coaching, we're going to go through all that with them as well. So we are looking as well to, to help us on that. We would really like to get some medical advice. And if there's any doctors out there that would like to get on board and help us, that would also be great. We've got a fund for additional services and support. So we've got money in the bank now that if we feel that we can help somebody and they need something where we can fund it privately to improve their access. So maybe they're waiting on the NHS for three months or six months for something which to do with their mental health. We may be able to support that as well. And then Mental Health Awareness Week is in May. And I'm really excited about this. I want, I want everyone to get involved <laughs> and go as big as possible. OK, so what my idea is, is we have an amazing platform as skydivers to really raise awareness of mental health in this week. So I'd really love people, drop zones, FS organisers, free fly organisers to think outside the box and see how much we can do in the sky to promote charities and promote numbers. So I want things like people spelling out the Samaritans number in the sky in formations or doing hoop jumps with... the with mind on yeah. the hoop or flying flags or whatever you can think of and I mean, then try and get it out to the media, local media, national media and try and improve awareness that way. And that doesn't really matter what charity that's for. So that doesn't matter who you want to do that for or anything else like that. That just, it's just because it's Mental Health Awareness Week and it's about getting out there that skydiving, if we can get this into the papers or we can get this onto national news or wherever we want to get it, whatever we want to do with it, it's just showing that our support, our sport is massively supporting mental health and that it's a sport that you can come into, you can really be comforted and everything else like that, knowing that people are actually doing things for mental health situations. Um, the next one that we have got on there is uh, the Uplift and Visioner fundraising event at uh, Sky High. Uh, so I don't know if anybody knows Chris Sears. If you know Chris Sears, you know he's set a fantastic absolutely beautiful charity up where it's one jump one tree so you can donate for the amount of jumps that you've done in a year so if you've done 300 jumps you donate x amount of money and he plants 300 trees this year i think he planted over a hundred thousand trees 
for the, from, from just from the sport, from the amount of jumps that were donated. So we're going to combine forces and we're going to do a, a, a sky high and it's going to be just a massive charity event. So it's going to be a skills camp charity event. So it's not going to be a boogie, it's going to be a skills camp charity event. It's going to be how many jumps we go, we're going to be um, planting the trees. You know, all donations, a lot of donations are going to go towards getting the organisers, but also then straight into the charity. We're going to be massive amounts of prizes. So we've got every single manufacturer right now, because I've been around to every one of them this week, or yesterday and today, and told them that they need to be there. So there's going to be some big prizes, big stuff coming on, you know, and it'll be a fantastic event. And then the next thing we've got is that once we've got our charity status through, British Skydiving have agreed to support the charity. And therefore, when you renew your membership, there is an option to donate on there as well. We're also looking to raise issues, so issues brought to us by members that might affect the mental health that have to do with the, what the national governing body can help us to. So again, we're going to try and raise some of those things. So one of those things that's being brought to us at the moment is the, uh, the medicals for instructors. So we're looking at that as a charity um, and then going from there. And then the other thing we're going to start doing is some regular mental health and improve your mental health sessions. So I'm going to hand over to Pete. Yeah, and that what that's going to be is probably, we're not going to time scale on that, um, but it's going to be online, so people, non skydivers as well. So maybe friends of yours, family members, whatever you want, people in your work, whatever, can come along and they can see uh, techniques and uh, routines, rituals and habits that I actually do to create the life that I have actually created from this point and up to this point and moving forward. So we're going to do a bit of a recap. I don't know how many people were here last year when I did this. And it was more about my story about how I changed my life in 18 months. So I've been a, I was a substance abuse addict with alcohol and drugs for 18 years. At the age of 21, I had an heart attack of a drug overdose. And luckily, they brought me back to life. And they gave me a second chance. And I didn't continue with that second chance. I actually continued doing what I was doing. And then... I ended up in a more state of when do I stop, how do I stop this? So I started skydiving, right? And I was like, I'm going to start skydiving because it's this sport that's going to be dangerous, it's going to be cool, I'm going to be like, right, so I'm going to stop drinking, I'm going to stop doing the substance abuse. And you know what? It did help. At the beginning, it helped, right? And it really did. And it gave me a new passion and a new uh, adrenaline inside my body. And I went into four-way skydiving, I went into eight-way. Uh, I've been very, very fortunate in this sport that I've got to travel the world. I've traveled all over the world. I've represented Great Britain in three, three different events in Dubai, Australia, Germany. I've been on, I'm an AFF instructor, a tandem instructor, and Fortunately or unfortunately, I own a drop zone as well. I don't, I don't know which way you want to take that. But, um, so, yeah, I've had a fantastic time in skydiving. But one of the things that I did find is when I was away from skydiving, I wasn't stopping the substance abuse. So I was trying to hunt for the same thing that we all get from a skydive. And we all know what that feels like, right? So my answer to that was going and getting alcohol, drugs, whatever it was that I could get into my body at that time. And that was the way I was suppressing the actual pain that I was in. So in 2020, just as we bought Sky Eye Skydiving, which was a big achievement again, they then shut us down for COVID. And that was a massive blow to me. I didn't know how to cope with that. I didn't know how to pay the members of staff. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was in ex a massive amount of debt all of a sudden. I'd borrowed a lot of money through my family, you know, and they'd supported me all the way. So what did I choose to do? I choose to really go to the substances and hit the substances hard. And there was a point where I was like, a moment in my life where I had a light bulb moment, which was like, if I don't change now, then how will I actually change? And that light bulb moment was when I attempted suicide in 2020 the end of 2020. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details because that's not brief, but let's just say the universe and something happened where it stopped me from doing it and it was the best thing that ever happened to me because now I'm getting to give all this experience that I've now got from going through these experiences back to some people that actually I'm still helping with now. I've been very honoured for people to actually come and ask me 
for help and I coach them, try and do it and try and give them the experiences that I've got. Okay, so we're going to talk about how did I change? So the first bit is ev ev whenever you want to change, you've got to change the story, right? So if we keep telling ourselves a story, which is whatever story you want to want to want to tell yourself, you'll start believing in it. Okay? So if you start telling yourself that you can't get up in the morning, you never will get up in the morning. Okay? And it all starts with wanting to change that story. You have to want to change it. No one else is going to change it for you. No one else made me change. I could have continued doing what I was doing and I probably wouldn't be here no more. But it has to start from here. Nobody has the answers. I don't have the answers. The techniques I'm going to talk to you about in about three or four minutes are what I use. They're not guaranteed to work for everybody else, but they work for me, okay? One of the big steps I made was after deciding that I didn't, I wanted to be here and I wanted to make a change, the first thing I did is went and talked about it. You know, people would say me standing here is a fantastic thing. I'd say thank you very much, but you know what? All I'm doing is talking. And I'm actually just getting it off my chest about how I feel. And people that bottle things up and don't let them go and don't talk to them, never move forward. We always get stuck in a rut. If I have a glass in my hand and I hold it for an hour, then it'll ache. If I hold it for 24 hours, it'll really ache. If I hold it for 48 hours, my arm's going to feel like it's paralyzed. So the quicker we let go of the things we want to talk about, the easier it becomes. And that doesn't matter where it is. You know, I started talking to, the first conversation I had was with my little brother. In fact, the first conversation I had was with a guy in a petrol station that I didn't even know. And all he asked me was, was I, am, am I okay? And I just said no. And I just broke down in tears and I just cried. That's all I did. You know, and that's the first step. The first step to anybody changing their life is talk. It's amazing to talk. If people talked more, the world would be a way better place. You know, nobody would bottle things up. You know, and that's the first step that I would recommend to anybody. Second step for me, first of all, is then going listening to audiobooks, going on seminars. I've been on several seminars. In fact, this morning I started another seminar at like six o'clock in the morning to do with uh, one of my mentors that I really look up to. Uh, and I'm, it's just about developing new techniques, rout routines, rituals, and habits that serve you in the right manner, okay? And that's one of the things that I try and do. I never listened to a book ever until t over two and a bit years ago. Now I've listened to over 17, maybe 20 books, been on four seminars, have a personal lifestyle coach every week, just been with a binge eating specialist in disorder, um, and then going to ADHD specialists, finding out why and wh what I do as a routine, ritual, and habit was creating them bad habits. And how do I get out of them bad habits to create new habits and good habits? <coughs> Sorry, I need some water. Is it water? No, it's all right. Okay, so routines, rituals, and habits. I talk about these a lot if people have sp spoken to me, and they're very, very important. So I hold my hands up, I've got ADHD, right? That's what I've got. Found out, got ADHD. Routines, rituals, and habits are a bit of a pain in the backside for somebody with ADHD because they don't really want to do them. But they actually make our lives better because we actually have them and they make us feel better. So one of the first things is having self-respect I work on every single day. So if anybody in this room spoke to me, what is the first thing that I actually say to people when they say, how are you? Can anybody shout out what I say? If somebody asks me how I am, what do I say? Come on. That's one of them. What is it, Charlie? Amazing. Right, so why do I say that I'm amazing? Because I believe it. It's the story I tell. Every day I wake up, we're going to go through some routines and rituals in a minute about why I, how I get to this state. But I am feeling amazing. I'm living the dream. I understand what living the dream means. It's my dream. It's what I do every morning. And it's how I am with everybody. So... Self-respect for me, I tell myself I love myself every day, even though I may not believe in my body. Seriously, like, if nobody else is going to tell me, I might as well tell myself, right? So, you know, um, and I just work on that constantly. 
you know. And each day, by the way, I treat like a book. So every day has to have a good start, the same as a book. If you've listened to books or a film or read books or whatever it is, every book and film has a good start. And every book and film has a great ending, right? The middle, we don't really remember the middle, so it doesn't really matter what happens in the day. It's just about focusing and that we can get through that part and through that section and then move into the end of the day. And then the day starts again. It's a new book. It's a new film. And I look at every day that I wake up like that. And I look at it because it just can, anything can change. Anything can happen and you can make them changes yourself. Okay, so the routines, rituals and habits are super easy to do, by the way. Like, mega easy. Like, really easy. But they're also super easy not to do. Like, this, they're even easier not to do. Because we talk ourselves and we create a story in our head that says that when we do it, it's not going to be as good as when we don't do it. But if we don't do it, then we never know what's going to change. Okay? Okay, so my morning routines, by the way, these are what I use for me. I am not suggesting these routines will work for everybody in the room. They have got scientific proofs behind them. I have done research on them, but I'm not suggesting that they're going to work for everybody in the room. Right? If you take some of these away today, and you choose to use them, then fantastic, and it's great, and the, they potentially could work, all right? So this, the first one is my morning routine, try and wake up at the same time every day, and what that does is that gives you a pattern of creating a new routine, ritual, and habit, and it could be six o'clock in the morning, it tends to be 6.30 in winter because you know, we're people that want to sleep in winter because winter is a hibernating factor of what it is. So believe it or not, you will sleep more in winter. That's just, that's the way we're built from 2,000 years ago. And that's, you know, that's what will happen. So try and set a time to get up every day. So winter for me is like 6.30. Um, the girlfriend kind of likes that at that point. But like in summer, it's like 4.35 and the girlfriend doesn't like that. <laughs> She's not a great lover of that bit. After that, I do 10, five to 10 minutes of gratefulness and gratitude. And what I mean by that is I lie in bed and I calm my breathing down with meditation and then I start to say the things that I'm grateful for. Why I'm grateful, why am I here? And we start the morning by saying the things that we're grateful for. We can't start the morning in a bad way because we start to say who we're grateful for. So this morning I actually said, I was grateful for Kate being part of my life and what we're doing, you know? There's many a times that I've said, I'm grateful for my mom, I'm grateful for my dad, you know? And then I pick a certain person that I may be thinking about at that point, and I imagine them smiling. So all I do is I close my eyes, say what I'm grateful for, say who I'm grateful for, say I'm grateful to myself, and then I visualize someone smiling that I love. And you cannot, if you visualize that, take one minute now, visualize that one person that's really special to you in your heart and visualize them smiling. And I guarantee you now that you can't help but smile and then bring you freaking joy. So it's something that I really work on. And then from there, I do something which is called incantations. And this is in the same five minutes to 10 minutes. And the incantations are about driving my physiology higher. So from there, I start to tell myself it's going to be an amazing day. I do visualization, tell myself that all the power's within myself as well. And I start to really work myself up and really get my physiology changing and moving so that it feels really good when I'm going to get out of bed. Now, let's be honest, nobody wants to get out of bed, especially in winter. It's cold. Unless you've got the heating switched on that some, some technical people may have, but I don't. And it's cold, and who wants to get out of bed? So then I use a technique right at the end of that, right at the end of the kind of incantations where I go, five, four, three, two, one. And I just jump out of bed, and now I can't feel, I just feel ejected, like with energy. And happiness, just to let you know, comes from energy. If I am not energetic, I can't be happy. You can't walk around going, I'm happy, yeah, I'm super happy. 
You, know, you have to inject the energy where you're like, yes, okay, I'm happy, I'm amazing, right, okay, I'm moving. I've got the body moving, right? And from there, I do five to ten. Sorry, I make the bed straight after that. Now, this is something that when people knew me from a long time ago, she so got an old teammate of mine in the back there. She knew that I never made my bed. I did not like making that bed. Trust me, I was like, when I was a child, I was like, don't be daft, mother. Come on, <laughs> that's not happening. But the reason why I make the bed is because it's potentially, probably the worst thing I ever do every day. So I complete the worst task that I have in my day at that point right at the first time. And now I'm like, well, every other task is simple because I've completed it. And I hate the making the bed. And now I'm like this now with the spreading it out. I mean, if, if the missus was still not in it, I'd probably be eyeing it, actually. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and then after that, we just get the body moving, right? So 15 minutes to 30 minutes, call it 15 minutes to thrive, 30 minutes to fulfillment. And it's literally just to get the physiology of your body moving, right? How many people love going to the gym? Be honest. Put your hands up now. How many people love going to the gym? How many people don't like going to the gym? A lot more, right? Out to them people that don't like going to the gym, how good does it feel when you leave the gym? Put your hands up. Probably everybody, right? Yeah? So when we leave the gym, why is that? It's because we've changed the physiology of our body and we've created energy inside us. And that's the reason why we leave the gym. We're like, wow, I've got so much energy. Mike knows there's a lot of running right at the beginning of the run. Doesn't probably want to do it. He's like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. Right At the end of it, he's like, yes, I've done it. Yes. You know, and he's smiling because it's true, right? So we can do that within five minutes. Don't even need to do 15 minutes. It is called 15 minutes to thrive or 30 minutes for fulfillment. But you can do it in five minutes. And it's just about example, jumping up and down on the spot. Getting your body moving, getting your blood, blood flowing through your body and then just saying some stuff to you like, yeah, today's going to be an amazing day. It's going to be awesome, right? And now all we're doing is creating energy. And these are the techniques that I use every day. The last one is the one I hate the most in fairness, but it, this is where we call it um, being the gatekeeper of your mind, right? And I call it being the gatekeeper of your mind because of the fact that who really wants to get in cold water, Right? No one likes cold water, especially not in winter in the UK because it's cold. I can promise you, this body can tell you it's cold, right? And that is where we're just, I don't want to get in that cold water, but I make a promise to myself that as long as I can control my mind, when my mind is saying, don't go in there, and I'm like, get in there, that I am controlling it. And that's the biggest point, is that we, there is so many people out there that don't control their minds, including me at times, by the way, just to let you know. And it's how do we catch it? So the cold water, I would recommend to anybody. Yes, it's not nice, but it does create a lot of energy. Daytime routines. First thing after I've done all that realistically and had a shower is I send a text message to someone just saying how good they've done. If I feel like they've done a great job at work, send it out to them personally. Or if I feel like I've not spoke to someone in a long time, I just send a loving message to someone just saying, by the way, I just think you're doing a fantastic job. I'm super proud of you. And that's just gratefulness. That's just giving back to that one person that is the second thing in the daytime, understandably, uh, is trying to listen to a podcast or a book or whichever. And understandably, at this point, everybody's going, wow, where does he fit working into all this? <laughs> or where does he actually fit anything else in? Well, this is all just in your time in the beginning where we can get off Facebook or get off social media at the beginning. Or in the day, it's like, you know, just listening to books in the car instead of listening to music. And that just creates a new step for me where I may have forgot about something or I may learn something new, like the five-second rule, which is five, four, three, two, one. That is to do with Mel Robbins. That's to do with a, a lady that's an American lady. And she, I robbed that straight from her. Um, the next one is help someone. And that could just be anybody in the street. Like, ask anybody, are they okay? Or, example, you go to a McDonald's for a coffee or a Starbucks and you just say, how's your day? That's just helping someone. That's just asking them a question where it's just not, thank you for the coffee. And that is giving back, again, for me, feels great. 
fulfillment, you know, gratitude and gratefulness. Okay, so the evening routine, still haven't really got this nailed down just yet, but um, say goodnight to someone, tell them that you love them and care about them. That could be anybody, doesn't matter who it is. So just the little message or a phone call to them people, just to say, love you, just want to, you know, just care about you. And then from there, um, set a time for finishing work. Now, this was huge for me, like, massive like I was like I can't finish work until everything's done and my phone has to stay on and I'm like wow okay and then understandably that didn't work very well for me because I didn't hold a relationship down very well for a long time because they were a bit bored of me work until 10 11 o'clock 12 o'clock at night and then I was getting like three or four hours of sleep which was not great for myself my body or anything like that or the relationship or anybody else um, so I set a time where it's Anything between 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock at night. And that could be anything, by the way. That could be not talking to someone, switching the phone off to silent. That doesn't just mean work. That means focusing on either yourself for your own time or someone that you want to give your time to. And the most amount of like feeling that I ever get is from giving my own self that little bit of self-love and then passing that self-love on to someone else. And just sitting there with them and just, it could be my mum, just watching good old boring Coronation Street, you know, which, again, I dislike. But, um, and that can just be there sitting. We don't even need to talk to each other. Just, just being there. But just not being on your phone. Not thinking about work. Not doing anything. Just everything's finished. And when people... Text me, and some people in this room know what that's like. They don't get a reply till the morning. Sometimes that morning, if it's in summer, it's about four o'clock in the morning. Maybe it's summer, but oh well. Um, but yeah, you don't get that. You you definitely because you, you're a, you're a, you you like to send messages at like ten o'clock. Yeah, yeah, and and to be brutally honest, by then I've already been in a really good sleep by then. So the next one for me is get as much sleep as possible. So. I can give you a little bit of a stat on this as well. So the average person in, in the UK and the, uh, the US at the minute is getting around about five hours and 46 minutes of sleep a day on average. They're going to lose 10 years of their life. That's what they reckon. So right now, I've done a, a lot of, I've been on a seminar for sleep with a guy called Matthew Walker, Why We Sleep. Uh, fascinating book that he writ, uh, wrote, sorry. And he did a fascinating kind of uh, seminar on it on the reasons behind rest and sleep. And this, for me, was the biggest like game changer. This gave me so much more energy. This was like, now I'm like, hey, if I've got to be up like I was here on Friday morning, I've got to be up and I've got to be doing my routines at 5 o'clock, and then I've got to go to bed at 7.30. And that's what I'm doing. And everybody else can disappear. And I set all my day up and I plan it all so that 7.30 I'm in bed. And I sleep at 8, you know, and it's great. You know, I have anything between eight and ten hours of sleep sometimes, or rest, maybe not sleep, but it's rest, it's time in bed. It's actually you time, because understandably, we are a machine, right? We are a materialistic machine that if we don't give it rest, I can promise you, it will fail. And without that, you then start other things rolling into the day. And then again, just get as much as you can. So we're going to do a questions and answers uh, on both the charity and the techniques or my past life or whatever you want to talk about. Uh, so if you want to talk about a question, then this young lady here with the beautiful locks, right, woo is going to pass the microphone to you. Uh, I would like to say, first of all, thank you very much, everybody, for turning up supporting us, people that have come and bought the T-shirts from us at the stand. If you want to buy, sorry, not bought the T-shirts, donated, my, my wrong word in there, um, donated to the T-shirts. If you want to come and get some T-shirts and donate, come to the stand, see me or okay, Kate, or I think Owen might be on there. Stick your hand up, Owen. There you go. Uh, and then you can come and grab a T-shirt and just donate. doesn't matter what it is. can be a penny, can be 100 quid, can be whatever you want. do not really matter. Okay, have we got any questions? From anybody. Now that is uh, go. Let, let's get the ball rolling.
Come on, it always takes a little bit. Oh, thank you. So, uh, can you give give us an example how anybody, basically from the skydiving industry, or not just the industry jumpers or whatever, can uh, request help? Can you basically walk through that process again? It was on the beginning of the uh, presentation, and you said that basically you tried it your own. Can you basically walk maybe step by step what can a person who struggles in whatever way, uh, yes, skydiver or not, or skydiver with a friend or whatever, uh, maybe like a rough step by step guide how they can actually um, ab well not approach, uh, get, the, get the help from the okay. or whatever. Okay, I, can't, I think I understand what you're, you, you're saying. So, um, from my personal opinion, um, and this was me, is I went and seeked help through a private company for a counsellor, personally. And this is one of the reasons why I think the charity is going to be so important, right? Because of the fact that I had to go private. And fortunately, and very grateful that, you know, my family and myself had enough money to put me private. Now, I understand that everybody has not got that opportunity, you know? And that's one of the reasons why we set the charity up because we want to give everybody potentially that opportunity to not think, oh, I need to go to the NHS. I love the NHS, by the way, but they're so inundated with men mental health and substance abuse cases right now is that I know from past experiences that the wait time is around about three months. And we, as a charity, want to try and cut that down for skydivers. So, in answer to your first question, I went and got a private counsellor and I started from there. And then I had peer support from there, from friends of mine around, and then I moved on from there. And then I developed from there, and then I went into the books and everything else like that. But the first question is, I actually started to talk, and that was the beginning statement. I wanted to change, and I started to talk. So, does that answer your question? Uh, my question, maybe I didn't make myself clear, uh, express myself clearly, was more on the technical side. Oh, well, okay. So, do you mean yeah, to do with the charity? To the uh, yeah, basically, you go to the uplifting, uplift skydiving website, you have some numbers there, you call them, they will take you from there, or how does it work? Okay. Yeah, so on the website, you've got different tabs at the top. So you've got mental health, you've got addiction, you've got um, eating disorders, sexual abuse, there's lots of different things. You go into that and you've got the um, self-help, the charities, their phone numbers, um, and some advice on certain elements of that. Then you've got, so you, that's one option. You can go through through that. There's also the um, phone number for the um, for the 24-hour for the Aviva counselling line, which we've got. Please come and get one. We've got loads of cards with them, but it's on there as well. Um, so you can go through there directly. You don't have to, you just ring them up. Um, if you want to go down the peer support route, um, then you can contact us um, via our Facebook. Um, and we will have other, other ways of contacting us available soon as well. Um, and if you want to go down because you want additional funding support, again, just contact us at the moment. Um, uh, but we should have more and more information on the website how to do things as well. Is, does that answer your question? Yes, that yeah. <laughs> thank you. Any more questions? Is there at any point going to be where you can actually have a counsellor on a drop zone? So, Because sometimes people find it hard when there's no one physically there to talk to. So it's something that we're going to... We've, we've talked to the drop zone owners about, and what we'd like to do is make... Basically, if, it, if there's an, a major incident on a drop zone, we, would like to, we offer them support straight away. Would you like us to fund a counsellor on site for that particular a major incident. We're also getting a hotline, I think, from Aviva as well, which will cover family and um, any witnesses to events like that. And then as far as general on a drop zone, we haven't actually just because that's a very good idea, but that would that would be something that we can maybe look at look at doing, definitely. Yeah, have like a role and counsellor that will maybe visit a drop zone once a month or something where there's that presence where you can build up rapport with one person rather yeah. than having... I know when I rang a, a line... You speak to anyone that's there, and then it's never the same person that you see continuously through your situation. Um, I mean, I got passed with about six different people before, I mean, anything really got sorted because it was just bombardment from every side. If you see someone constantly there, you can kind of build a rapport with someone and then build trust, and I think that helps massively. 
Yeah, and I agree with you entirely because, you know, consistency is key with, with anybody you're speaking to. So consistency is key. So, like, and, and one of the things that I did say is the line is, the, the initial line is for, like, desperate help to get the ball rolling. So it's not the same as other lines that are out there. This is a very specialist line that Aviva have set up. So they will direct you to the right section for you with a counsellor for the first five sessions. So in them first six calls that you made to a line, you got six different people. You'd get one person and then directed to somewhere. And that's what the priory is really good for. They're really good for directing you to the right place. And then from there, we're gonna have, we've already got peer support that hopefully we'd like some you know, volunteers who are in here or outside who can't make it to come along and speak to me or Kate about, you know, then that becomes, uh, the prime example is right now, there's a big shift in British skydiving for safeguarding, which is fantastic. That safeguarding officer could be part of Uplift and they could be doing some help on the peer support that way. Do you know what I mean? So it's not as, because understandably some things are extreme, uh, extreme, but some people just want to talk to people that have got experience with it. With it. So example, I have a, quite a lot of people talk to me about how did I stop drinking? You know, so and, and that's all it takes sometimes. Instead of, because some people understandably, in my opinion, are very much afraid of counsellors as well. Like, oh, I don't want to go to a counsellor, especially as a male, by the way. Don't want to go to a counsellor because I might feel weak. I might feel weak, so I'm not going to a counsellor. I've heard that quite a lot. So if we get in place in the end, some like rolling stuff with um, stuff like that. Sorry, we'll have to get the drop zones like permission because it'll be on their site and their businesses, but I can start some conversations with that, definitely. Yeah. Does that answer your question? And I love the idea, by the way. It's a great idea. Anybody else? Any more for any more? No? You know, if you've got a question, just ask it. It's all good. You know? Well, ah, go. Oh. See, go on. It's all right. I'm just wondering how long we can get this lady running up and down the room. <laughs> so the more questions we can get, you can even just ask me my favorite colors. You can keep running up and down the room, right? <laughs> What's the next step for the both of you? Say that again. What's your next step for the both of you? For What's your next step? For me? Yeah. Or for me and Kate and the charity or what? Just bo in both, like both, as in you. As in both I was saying, for, for me, my next step is just continue doing what I'm doing. And the objective is to save people's lives. And I said this last year to change a thousand people's lives. Uh, and I reckon I achieved that because I may have changed a thousand people's lives when BBC did a documentary on me. So that went out to, I think there was 27 to 30,000 people watched that on the actual night. So, you know, and moving forward for the charity. So for me personally, the, the road that I'm on is going to continue doing what I'm doing and keep helping people, keep moving forward. You know, I have bigger plans in the future for 10 years down the line, but we just take one step at a time right now. You know, remember, small steps equal life-changing results. And for Kate, what's for you, love? Yeah, so pretty much what's on the slide, the main thing we've focused on, on the next few months is obviously the peer support and see, getting volunteers on board that would like to get involved in that. And then I also am quite keen to have some conversations with APF and NZP, which is New Zealand and Australia, because... Yeah, but that's more difficult. <laughs> that's why I'm going with Australia and New Zealand work in a similar way to us, and I'm pretty sure they might be able to get something through their insurance. So I want to trigger and see if we can get, if they can get something similar over there and start with them. But USP is a bit of a harder, harder issue. Yeah, we'll see. Anybody? Ah, oh, right. Okay, we're, we're balls rolling. Are right, you just going to ask me a favourite colour? You're getting this girl moving, aren't you? <laughs> Sorry, what's your name? Beth. Right. Okay. Let's see how many times we can get Beth moving. Obviously, Peter, I was going to ask you about that coffee machine, but uh, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see you later, buddy. Yeah, that's all right, mate. We can when you've dropped the price on the coffee machine, we'll we'll do a deal. I forgot my question. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite colour? I have seriously forgot. My, no, I haven't. Um, you talk about volunteers. What are you looking for in your volunteers? I'm going to pass that one to Kate. 
Um, so just a range, really. It might be some people that have been through something specific in the sport and they think that that might be useful. So they might have come back from a really serious injury and think, well, I'd be happy to talk to someone about how I came back and the fears I had and how I overcame that or what support I needed. It might be someone that suffered a bereavement in the sport or witnessed something and it, they want to be there for someone like that. We will have requirements, so we will be DBS checking uh, and all our volunteers, and we will be trying to train them as much as we can um, before they go live with that. But it can be, and also it doesn't you don't have to have had experience. You could just be someone that's happy to be there, you know, just to listen to someone. So then, so then, how do you volunteer? Contact us. So we've had a few people over the year already contact us and say we'd be really keen, but we need we need stru um, structures in place with regards to DBS and safeguarding, and we want to make sure we've got all the policies in place for that. Um, so we've spent a lot of time doing that. So yeah, please contact us. Either come and speak to me and Pete. Send us, please send us a Facebook message. Um, we've got yeah, that would be really useful. Uh, we we've rang everyone that's contacted us that said they want to want to help already. So ple yeah, please contact us. Does that answer your question? Cool. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for attending the Uplift Charity and my talk on my techniques, my routines, rituals, and habits. Uh, have a fantastic day. Keep doing what you're doing and keep smiling, yeah? Thank you.